Welcome to Highline Excel class number 37. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook, Week 7, Business 214, Start and Finish File. If you're in the class, just go to our Week 7 website. Hey, some product function. We just talked about it in our last video. We were talking about array formulas, and the sum product came up because it's convenient. We can multiply ranges and then add them using the sum product function and we don't have to use the keyboard shortcut control shift enter as we do when we do array formulas. Now sum and product. So that's the name of this. Sum means to add, product means to multiply. So what it does is it takes two ranges or arrays of the same dimension, multiplies them, and then adds them. Let's go ahead and see how this works. Let's scroll down here just a little bit. We have a one row, two column array here, or range of cells. And then here we have another one by two range. One row, two columns. So we want to multiply these. We take that range times that range. If we do it longhand, we're going to say equals the first array is here. So we take the first one in the first array times the first one in the second array plus, and then we take the second one in the first array times the second one in the second array, and then hit enter, and we get seven. Now let's do it with the sum product because we don't want to spend all of our time doing it longhand equals sum product. Highlight the first range or array, and notice right in the screen tips it says array. It can handle arrays. That's significant. Ranges and arrays, we talked about in our last video. We saw the range is the cells. Arrays can be either cells or in array syntax. And in just uh, later in this video, we'll see where some formulas or functions cannot handle arrays, but the sum product is great because it can handle arrays. So for this simple example, we have one range there, comma, and then we select uh, the second range. Close parentheses, control enter, and we get seven. Now here's another way you can do this. You could say equals sum product. Highlight the range. And just a moment ago, what we did was we uh, used our comma. But you could multiply, multiply, and select the second range. Now, I have a note here. You only want to do this when the uh, dimensions of the arrays are not the same. For large spreadsheets, multiplying like this can take longer to calculate than just using the regular commas. But this will work. Hit Enter. It gives you the same thing. Some people use multipl no, multiplying all the time when they don't have spreadsheets, because then it works on the times when they're the same dimensions, but it also works when they're not the same. And we saw an example in our last video. We'll see an example here in just a moment also. Some product can also uh, do the same dimension no matter where they are. So I'm not going to do this one longhand, but this one equals some product. They don't have to be right next to each other. I can just say this one, comma, this one, as long as it's a one row by two column. It'll have no problem. Notice the comma there, because they're the same dimension. Enter. But what happens when we come down here and we say uh, we want to multiply this times this? Even though they're the same total number of cells, two, or the same number of elements in our array to when we do some product and say please give me this comma this this one is a one by two this is a two rows by one column close parentheses and it's just gonna say mm, no I don't think so one by two two by and a two by one is not gonna work no problem there's an easy way to get around this some product you highlight it instead of using a comma there's no comma there. You do a multiplication symbol. And it will uh, deal with it just fine. Control Enter. Now, I do want to do this one by longhand just to show you what it actually does. Right? So here, I'm going to say equals. There's a, a 1 by 2. So we're going to take the f this whole 1 by 2 and multiply it by that. And then add it to this whole 1 by 2 and multiply it by that. So you ready? Equals this times this one plus this one times this one. All right, so we did that little array times that. 
plus, and then we do the whole this whole array again times that two. So this one times this one plus this one times this one. Oops. Hope I did that right. I didn't hit my pluses and minuses correctly. So this is, I forgot a plus there too. All right, so I have that one times that one, that one times that one. And I plus them in the middle, right? And then plus, and then we go back again. We need to get this array times that. So it's uh, the one times the two, got that, plus the two times the two, and got that. You can see how when you're doing this longhand, this is a little set of arrays we're multiplying, right? So you, even when you're doing a little one like this, it's so potentially riddled with errors. Enter. Right? So that's why if you get in that situation, uh, some product or array formulas are just magnificent. All right, let's scroll down. So there are some rules. Rule to when to use comma, when the ranges or arrays are the same dimensions. Rule when to use multiplication, when the ranges or arrays are different dimensions. Now, so what is, there's a couple excellent uses for some product. Some product is great for dealing with arrays of trues and falses when you're doing conditional adding. Right? And so we're going to look at an example and we've uh, hinted out this earlier in the class when we uh, analyzed data sets and had to uh, add by month and year. We saw the month and year functions. We also saw the text function a couple weeks ago. And we saw how we could use the text function in a column and then and convert those to ones and zeros and then add them. But here we don't want to spend all that real estate. We don't have we don't want to have to create all these extra columns. We just want to be able to do multi um, adding with conditions in one cell. Here's our little data set, and here's our criteria. Our month is February when we want to add. Our year is 2009, and our sales rep is Julie. So adding. And we don't want to have to add a column like we did in earlier versions. Now the first trick is you got to remember how we use the text function in our earlier video. Because we have a column of dates, and these are serial dates. We can't just say, hey, true and false, does this February equal that? Because these are numbers, right? But the text function uh, will allow us to convert a particular date to a text string. Um, and then we can match it against this and this. If you uh, need to remind yourself, go back just a few videos in the Highline class and find the, the video about the text function and custom number formatting. But here we go. We're going to do it in one formula equals some product. And we're going to use the text function. And actually I have a note up here also. Uh, we're going to have to we're going to get a bunch of trues and falses and we're going to have to convert them to ones and zeros. And if you remember back to our uh, text function and custom number formatting, we multiplied by one, you could add zero, but double negative, a double negative is the best thing to use to convert trues and falses to ones and zeros. All right, so you ready? Double negative, and then in parentheses, we're going to use our text function. And our text function, we can say this whole column right here. So I click there, Control Shift Down Arrow. And I'm going to F4 to lock it, because I'm actually going to copy this formula down to the, the next cell. So right now, we have the text function of that whole range. We have to type a comma, and we can see our screen tip says the value, but now we have to type a comma and format the text. How do we want it formatted? Double quotes. We want MMM, year, 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 and double quotes. Close parentheses, and then close parentheses. Now, let's examine this. There's a bunch of important things about the double negative, the fact that we have these parentheses, and what we did with this text function. Now, I'm going to click back in this text function, and you can see the text function says give me a value. It is expecting a single value. The fact that we put an ar a range or an array here more than one value means that the text function has been converted to an array. And let's see what we mean by that. Why don't we highlight this? 
all the way to the uh, purple, which is the end of the, the text. And you can hit your F9 key. Now I have a small set here, data set, just so we can do this and see that it works. Hit the F9 key. Oh, look at that. It didn't just give me, like we did a couple weeks ago with the text function, it didn't just convert one single date. It converted all of them. So now we have an array. You can see those array curly brackets, uh, double quotes for text, and semicolon for rows. Right? We talked all about that in our last video. But that is the magic of the text function. Now I'm going to control Z. So because we put, instead of a single value, we put our whole range of dates, and then we custom number format it, this text function is delivering not serial numbers, but formatted numbers to match our criteria up here. Now let's highlight the double negative and then all the way to the green and see what the double negative does. Because right now, uh, oh, actually it won't do anything. <laughs> uh, not yet. Backspace. So we have, as we just saw a moment ago, our F9, right? Boop, there it is, Control Z. And now we need to ask the question, and uh, are any of those equal to and now I need this February and this 29 together, so we'll click on that, ampersand, and then click on this. That's the join symbol, shift 7. I'm going to highlight this and just show you what it evaluates to, F9. Oh, it takes the two different criteria from two different cells and puts them together. So now we're, uh, it's one criteria, criterion, control Z. And now when we highlight just like this, just up to the text, and hit F9, we're going to get false, true, false, true, false, true, true, false. Control Z on that. We're just doing that to see how the formula is evolving and how it's working. Now put the close parentheses on the text, highlight all everything, including the double negative, and hit F9. And now we got our 01010110. That is what we need to do, in essence, Boolean logic. Those ones mean true. Those zeros means falses. Control Z. Now we have to continue this. There's the double negatives, um, and or, the, or that whole thing. And notice that's the array. Now our sum product is going to ask a question of this column this column, and this column. And they're all the same dimensions. So we're going to use our comma comma. The, uh, we could use multiplying, but for bigger spreadsheets, you, you don't want to do that. Uh, the commas are faster calculating, and the double negative is faster calculating, too. Now we can do our second series array, which is going to be this whole thing here. And I'm going to hit the F4 key. Oh, I need to lock this, too. So all the cell references in this formula need to be locked. And I'm just going to put the dollar signs everywhere. Now let's just see, uh, we have the names here, but now we have to type equals and then click on this name for Julie. So that's our criteria and hit F4. Now highlight this, this whole range here with that equal, and this will give us trues and falses. F9, oh, we better control Z, and we're going to use our double negatives again. Double negative, open parentheses, close parentheses. So now we have an array, array 1, which is zeros and 1s, an array 2, which is zeros and 1s. Anytime you get a 1 here and a corresponding 1 here, 1 times 1 is 1, which means true. Finally, our third array, comma, the third array right here. And now I'm going to scroll over here so we can see this a little bit better. Highlight the number of phone calls. So our goal is to sum conditionally number of phone calls. And I'm going to hit the F4 close parentheses, and that sum product, ones and zeros, and the next array is ones and zeros, and this final array is the actual numbers. So only when we get a one times a one times the number of phone calls will we get a number. Now I'm going to control enter. It's not an array formula. We do not have to use control shift enter. And now with that lovely formula, I want to do formula evaluator. Formulas. Formula evaluating and then evaluate formula. And let's go ahead and evaluate it one step at a time. So I'm, notice the underline says, hey, I'm going to evaluate this. So it evaluates this, converts it to our, te <coughs> our text, 
it took that serial number and converted it to text, just like we our criteria is. Evaluate. I'm going to click Evaluate again. Evaluate again. It's doing the ampersand. Now, the whole string here, I mean the whole array is saying, is that any of those equal to that? Evaluate. It says some falses and trues. Now, the double negative is next. Not next. It's, I guess, inside this other one, which will evaluate the name. Evaluate. So it gets Mo, Julie, Mo, and now it's going to say, is it equal to Julie? Evaluate. So we get some trues and falses. Oh, it did. I must have blinked. It did that one up there. So now we have the double negative, and oh, and now it's going to do all the rest. Click Evaluate. Oh, that didn't do it so well. Poor formula evaluator didn't do it as well as uh, we might have here. Let me show you here just since uh, we can go like this and highlight it and hit the F9. And then we can highlight this and hit the F9. And then we can highlight this and hit the F9. And now we have a 0 times a 0 times a 5, which will give a 0, and a 1 times a 1 times a 2, so it gets a 2 there. And then we have a 0, a 1. No, that one's not going to work. I can't eye this <laughs> very well. But there's another 2 in there, too, that, that works. Uh, not that one. Not that one. Maybe. Oh, it's this one. 1 times 1. I think that's the right one times this 2. So there's two 2's that will get added together eventually. And the final stage, we have to just go like this and hit the F9, and it gives us 4. Now, don't hit Enter, because it'll put that 4 in the cell. I'm going to hit Escape and it keeps our lovely little formula there. So some product is very good here because it can handle these arrays. Remember the text function had, we put some range of cells in it so it converted to arrays. Not only that, but this right here, we're doing an operation or a comparative operation on an array. So that whole thing there. Now text right here, if you tried to put that into the sum ifs, it would not work. The, there, there are ways, um, other ways by adding columns and doing other things, but that text function, which is very convenient for analyzing dates, will not work with the sum ifs. And the reason why is because sum if functions, sum ifs, count ifs, and all those kind of things cannot handle arrays, but the sum product will. So that's a big point for sum product, and it's the reason why a lot of people use sum product when they do uh, multi conditional adding or things like that. Now, uh, one last point about the sum product. Um, we said that this text turns to an array and sum if can't handle it. There's another situation where uh, the sum if cannot handle an array, but the sum product will. And that is in a video. You can watch this uh, video right here. But when you have workbook references, meaning you're doing some if to another workbook, it won't work because some if will think that the workbook reference is an array. And so the sum product will work in that situation. And there's a video on that. Now I want to scroll back up here. And uh, we just looked at a great example for adding, given some conditions, the phone calls. That's adding. But now I want to show you how to count. Sometimes you just want to count. Now this is very easy. We looked at this. This um, text gave us true and falses for the date. This uh, range set, set equal to this name gave us trues and falses for when Julie's name matched. This array right here gave us the numbers like five phone calls, two phone calls. All we have to do when we're counting is leave this last range off. So I'm actually going to highlight this whole thing in edit mode, control C, escape, click here, F2, control V, and then get rid of this because that has all the fives and twos. All that will be left are zeros and ones, zeros and ones, and anytime there's a one times a one, that'll be a one, and the sum will count it as one occurrence. Now I'm going to hit the backspace key here and then backspace to get rid of that comma right there and then control enter. Remember the sum product is great because you don't have to use control shift enter. Let uh, again sum product and the text function and double negative great for multi-conditional adding or counting when you have dates 
All right, um, we'll see you next video.